is going to make your modified mRNA tingle. Time Lies presents Greatest Schwab's Volume 15. A new world order in music. One, two, three, four, five. All the unvaccinated are still alive. A little bit of Pfizer in my arm. A little bit of BioNTech does no harm. A little Johnson Johnson does the trick. A little AstraZeneca so you don't get sick. It's Tuesday number five. Hi, everyone. How are you? So I'm going to be trying to be more active on my True Crimes channel, and I'll be following up. You know, Menonox has been very busy going back to court this year in Italy sometime, or trying to, and other activities she's involved with. She's got very political, and she's getting herself involved in a lot of other cases, and she has been ever since she returned from the scene of the crime in Italy for her the murder she uh, committed and got away with. And the problem with the situation with her, you know, unlike other murderers who get away with it, she's gotten an enormous, enormous amount of publicity thanks to then Gogarty Marriott Public Relations and now I guess other public relations that she uses and all her connections there and controlling the mainstream media and her narrative. So she's been able to lie and lie and lie and she continues to do so and even more dangerously Although I don't believe she's run for public office yet, I wouldn't put it past her. And she does seem like she is going in that direction. She has, over the years, been building up her public speaking, getting getting a lot of practice doing that. Of course, she, she hasn't gotten any better, in my opinion. She's always whiny and annoying. I don't know how anyone could listen to her. I don't know why anyone would go to talk with her. You want to hear a man and Knox? Knox! Oh, my God. You know, she gives the same lies and the fake wavery, fake acting, whatever. Anyhow, but the dangerous part of this, she's very dangerous and people need to pay attention because she is getting involved in politics and in um, how our criminal justice system is running, is run. And she's getting very political. And so here just recently on January 21st, 2024, she testified in Olympia, Washington, about the police interrogation bill. And, of course, she lies again. And I have a video on my channel about this, and I'm going to show you. But let's just she continues with the same lies, and nobody challenges her on it. You know, send them my videos. <laughs> you know, uh, make sure people have to learn. Unfortunately, there's so many details in her case, people don't bother to learn it. And so she gets away with continuing lying about it. And nobody challenges her. Like this so called reporter uh, who wrote a House committee in Olympia has postponed a vote on a bill that featured testimony from one of the world's most prominent wrongly convicted individuals, Amanda Knox. Um, you know, she wasn't wrongly convicted. She was rightly convicted. Anyways, House Bill 1062 seeks to remove deception as a tactic by law enforcement to elicit confessions during custodial interrogations. The bill aims to ensure that statements obtained through deceptive means are not automatically admissible as evidence marking a departure from the current legal landscape. Now, what I'm talking about is not this bill. Whatever you think about this bill Yay or nay, I could care less. Okay, it's not, I don't live there. It's not my problem. What concerns me is that this convicted criminal who should still be in prison is able to get up there and use her experience, alleged experience that she's lied about in so many ways, so many times. I mean, this woman wrongly convicted a black man for the crime and nobody calls her out on it. I've never heard anyone call her out on that, at least not to my knowledge. Sure, things have happened behind the scenes, but she still has the balls to go up there and act like she's some innocent victim. Right? So they should ask Patrick Lumumba to come speak. Huh? Call Patrick Lumumba, say so have his opinion. <clears throat> so, anyways, they're talking about the laws of this bill. I'm not interested in this bill. The bill's not the issue. The fact that Amanda Knox is trying to use her infamy, her infamous profile to influence a bill in government is concerning. And uh, there's multiple articles about this. 
like this one, trying to make it look, see, see how they're trying to make her look like a political candidate already? I'm telling you, this witch is going to try to, you know, these narcs, these psychopaths, they just want power and more power. And this witch gets some serious power. Look out. You know, she's going to be a, uh, like a Governor Hochul in New York or something. Or worse, in my opinion. This is like the last... I know politicians are usually evil, but my God, you got to keep this witch away from politics. But here's the point. The main lie that she is... Um, right here in the title is the lie she's been using. She wants testifies about this bill in Olympia in support of a bill to avoid interview statements of a police deception. Knox described her alleged alleged 53-hour questioning in Italy. So she's claiming that she was interrogated for 53 hours. So I'm going back to the first article now so you can read her quote here. They took a quote from her. So during the initial public hearing, Amanda Knox, who was accused uh, and is guilty of murdering her British roommate, Meredith Kircher, they don't even mention Meredith Kircher's name, Quote, I was subjected to 53 hours of questioning over five days in a foreign language without legal counsel, she told the committee. Knox was later acquitted, erroneously, in the murder case. So she's using this, this lie of uh, 53 hours. But at least the article does mention Patrick Lumumba. Let's see here. Knox later acquitted in the murder case, but only after she spent four years in prison. But the nation's highest court also confirmed the damages of the 2011 slander conviction, which included a three-year prison sentence against Knox for falsely accusing Congolese bar owner Patrick Lumumba for the murder. Knox sometimes worked at the establishment Lumumba owned. Yes, yeah, she worked there. She was fired for being a lousy worker. She is set to be tried again for the slander conviction. Oh, I didn't know that. She's set, to, she's set to be tried again. Oh, no. Wait a minute. What am I saying? That's that's why she wants to go back to Italy for this year. She's trying to challenge that. She wants to really get rid of that. She, it really bothers her that, she was, that, that that rightful conviction went through. So the one silver lining on this is that even though she got away with the murder charge, the murder conviction, she's still stuck with the slander conviction against for falsely accusing a black man of murder. So that's still sticking to her. That That is just... She can't stand that. Maybe that's what's preventing her from going to politics uh, because she wants to get rid of that. She wants to wipe that off. So that's why Amanda Knox asked, she's pushing, Amanda Knox is pushing to go back to trial in Italy over that. You know, but for public relations, the way you're going to hear about it and the way they've been talking about it, and I made some videos about it showing the news uh, people talking about it, they're saying, oh, Italy's going after Amanda again. Oh my gosh, why doesn't Italy just leave poor Amanda Knox alone? Why is Italy always going after Amanda? It's such BS. And like some people seem to buy this and they're pushing this lie. Besides her other lies of a 53-hour investigation, which I'm going to show you, I have a video that details uh, exactly how she's lying about that. But it's a big fat lie. She was not interrogated 53 hours. Never happened. Nuh uh. I don't care how many times. She's doing the typical public relations thing of if you just repeat the same lie over and over and over. And she keeps doing that. She is relentless. She is the energizer bunny from hell. She will just keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. She will never stop. And I will never stop pointing out that she's lying. So there you have it. <laughs> and she's just going on and on. So I think that's why Amanda Knox is going back to Italy this year. Yeah, she does. She wants to go into politics, but she can't because if she did go into politics, people would say, what about that conviction you have for slander? Uh, that would keep slamming her in the face by her detractors, right? So the worst day, so Menonox goes on, it says, quote, the worst day of the entire ordeal was the day that I was interrogated overnight by police officers who claimed to have evidence against me. Yeah, they did have evidence, Amanda, your boyfriend threw you under the bus and said you went out and he didn't know where you were that night, the night of the murder. <laughs> her boyfriend took away her alibi. That's what happened. She had always omits that part of the story. Don't you love that? It's like, wait a minute, Amanda, why did the police start interrogating you? What started it? What what instigated it? Oh, yeah, your boyfriend taking away your alibi. <laughs> I mean, it's just, but the way she she's allowed to just like go with the narrative, nobody challenges her. 
And she even goes, Joe Rogan doesn't challenge her. Nobody challenges this witch. Nobody. Nobody. And the only people out there just like supporting her, paid for her, by her PR or whatever. It's such a joke. It's a, But it's a sick, demonic, evil, evil woman. A satanic, demonic woman here. Perfectly possessed, I think. Anyways, so she goes on. The worst day of my the entire ordeal was the day that I was interrogated overnight by police officers who claimed to have evidence against me and who claimed that there were no, they, excuse me, who claimed that there were witnesses who could place me at the scene of the crime. They lied to me. <laughs> she's she's saying, oh, they lied to me. I did not know they could lie to me. She said. <laughs> The biggest liar on the planet is like, oh, you lied to me. Oh my gosh. I didn't know they could lie to me. <laughs> Although only I could lie, says Amanda. Unbelievable. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. I just to laugh after all these. She's still going harping on on this. It's such a liar. Uh, in 2019, oh, they had to go to the European Court of Human Rights. So she got some kind of win there that she didn't deserve. Um, Knox testified. She claimed the police used force. Blah, blah, blah. They did not. They didn't touch her. They may have tapped her on the back of the head once, but I would too, man. She's so she's so irritating and annoying and such a liar. So no wonder they got fed up with her. I think anybody would have got fed up and wanted to hit her anyways. By the end of the interrogation, I thought I was insane because of how they gaslit me. Oh, so that's another big thing she's coming out with now. Her new line now is that they gaslit her. Well, this is the greatest issue for me when it comes to resolving issues of wrongful convictions. So she's taking the current idea that everybody's sick of being gaslit about a certain um, safe and effective, shall we say, intervention. So everybody's talking about how we're being gaslit by the media and whatnot and the CDC and all that. So Amanda Knox is taking that idea and saying, you know what? I was gaslit by the police. Yes, that's my new line 20 years later. She keeps reinventing the story and the lies. So not only does she say the same lies over and over, but she weaves it in a new thing. And I just saw an article when I looked her up saying, Amanda Knox gaslighting. So now she's the expert on gaslighting. Just so you know, you probably, if you bother seeing anything about that, she'll probably be blathering on about that. She'll blather on about anything. And she'll try to tie into herself and what a victim she is because she is the ultimate victim in the victim narrative scam that's going on with all these wealthy people. Don't forget, she's a multimillionaire from all the money she's made from movie deals. I think she could, she just recently got a new movie deal, Hulu, I think. She's got a new movie deal to tell her story again for anyone who wants to watch it. Well, anyways, let's talk about that 53-hour lie, her 53 hours of questioning that she claims that she had. So I do have a video about this on my channel. Please watch. Please forward to anybody who buys this witch's lies. She is such a liar. And if you don't even know about her lies and call her out, it's because you can't even be bothered to look up on YouTube for a video about it. Because I got it right here. The Menonox PR lies number three. The 53-hour interrogation. So I go through the whole thing here. I'm not going to play the whole video. You can watch it. But it goes through the whole evening, how she went and how, you know, she was such a complainer while she was there. This is, this is testimony. This is actual court testimony, okay? I didn't make this up. This is from the court transcripts. So you can see exactly what the police said. The police there in Italy are called the Flying Squad. Yes, a funny sounding name, but that's the translation. That's how it translates to English. That's what they call it. Uh, so yeah, so this is her. These are th th This goes through exactly when she was questioned, the exact timings of it. So, and by the way, she was not the only one. I mean, what happens is when the police want to came in after the murder, obviously a very situ serious situation, all of the friends and all of the acquaintances of Meredith Kircher, the murder victim, were brought in to the police station. So obviously you've got the police station full of people. The police are not going to be able to say, okay, in and out in five minutes, right? It's not a fast food joint, right? <laughs> so when, they, when you're called in, and this happened to all of Meredith's friends, they were brought in multiple times. They were multiple times as people who knew the facts, as I think I believe is the phrase for it. So anyways, Amanda was not the only one who had to go in and you sit around and you wait until your turn 
So they're ready to talk to you. And there's just a lot of hours of sitting in the interrogation, not the, not the, the waiting room, basically, in the police station. So Amanda complained, complained that she had to sit in the police station. Now, the night that she did uh, end up confessing to the crime the first time in writing, um, that night she wasn't even supposed to be there. Right. She wasn't even supposed to be at the police station that night. It was her boyfriend, Rafael Selechito, who was called in for questioning to answer some questions. And she tagged along with him. So she wasn't even supposed to be there that night, but she tagged it because she wanted people suspect that she wanted to keep an eye out on her boyfriend, Raphael, at the time. Or wasn't, if you want to call it a boyfriend, they knew each other for a week. They had just gotten together, just did drugs and had sex together, whatever. Um, but she was there to keep an eye on him. And while she was there, that's when he threw her under the bus and took away her alibi. And that's what began her questioning. And she got so flustered that she ended up falsely accusing her boss. And of course, when she accused her boss, she placed herself at the scene of the crime by saying she was in the kitchen, you know, covering her ears and all that. So anyways, I don't have the exact, there was a chart, it was a good chart somebody did. Let me see, I don't, I don't know if I have it on another video or not, but there's a, a chart that shows exactly each day because it was five days from the murder between the murder happening and when she was arrested. And in that time, the entire, if you add up all the hours together when she was actually questioned, it was like maybe 10 hours over five days. But again, a lot of people went through that questioning type of questioning. Uh, and obviously she and her roommates that lived with Meredith had a lot of questioning. So um, she's just a liar. She lies. She was not interrogated 53 hours. And when you look into the details of what she claims, what, what she was gaslit. Uh, if anyone's gaslighting, it's Meg, it's Amanda Knox, who is the gaslighter, who has gaslit hundreds of millions of people through the mainstream media and her public relations, and, she, and now politicians in government. And she is continuing to do it to this day. She is gaslighting everybody by continuing pushing the same lies that go unchallenged and people need to not take her seriously and not uh, listen to her and not give her this publicity. I mean, not only is she going into government and trying to influence bills being passed regarding their justice system. I mean, she's getting, she's published in all the mainstream media. I mean, there's multiple articles about this. These are just two of them. I mean, she gets, not only is she influencing uh, government, trying to influence government, she's also getting a lot of publicity for it. So uh, this is serious. She's more and more dangerous as time goes on, and uh, she needs to be called out for her lies. All right, so that is all I want to say today. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover or any uh, videos or interviews to review or react to, I'd be happy to do so. Just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.